Hello, everyone. Happy Friday. Welcome you to our Microdesk webinar series. My name is Ravali Ravalapati, and I'm the Marketing Manager for the California region. Welcome to today's webinar, Green BIM Fundamentals Ecotech Analysis. For those of you who aren't familiar with us, Microdesk is an Autodesk Gold, Oracle, and Google partner. We provide technology training and consulting solutions for the AEC industry. We have 12 offices located throughout the East and West Coast with a staff of over 90 consulting and technical specialists. Over the, next, <clears throat> over the next hour, we will take a closer look at some of the new tools in the latest suite of building information modeling software from Autodesk. In this session, we'll take a look at some of the analysis capabilities directly focused on building performance as it ties to lead. Themes from this session will carry over in our regularly scheduled Green BIM training classes. And just a little overview of what um, the Green BIM Fundamentals is a three-day um, hands-on class we're offering at our training centers nationwide. If you like what you hear today or are interested in more depth sessions, you can check out our course catalog or more details for more details and schedule of upcoming classes. Uh, presenting today's session is Microdesk Solutions Specialist Peter Marchese. Here at Microdesk, Peter works with national architecture firms implementing Revit. He specializes in custom training and content creation and leads <clears throat> firms through the process of creating standards and workflows based on building information modeling technology. Just a few logistics before we begin. In order to minimize any background distractions, you're all on mute for the duration of the session. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them in the question area of the webinar toolbar to the right of your screen. Peter will address as many questions as he can at the end of the presentation. If we run out of time, we'll provide you with our contact information so you can follow up with us. And now I'll turn it over to Peter. Thank you very much. So thank you, everybody, for uh, joining us this afternoon. We do appreciate your time. So I'm just making sure everybody can see what I've got. There we go. So today what we're going to do is we're going to be talking about Ecotech. That's going to be the main focus. But we're also going to be talking about analysis in general. And I'm going to be using Revit for a little while to show how you would actually get content from a BIM application or, in fact, almost any other application into uh, Ecotech for use. A lot of it will depend on what you're trying to do with it, and we'll go over why you might go one way versus the other way. Now, main thing with simulation and analysis right now, a lot of it is really focusing on the environmental aspect of it. And indeed, that's really one of the major portions of this. But you can use this for a lot of other things. And this little image off to the right here is actually showing a little bit more than just, you know, is it going to be okay for weather? You can also use this for design in terms of where can you actually see the object from. So if you're actually looking to do a building in a congested city location, and you want to make sure that certain elements of your building that you're really focusing on, you know, can you see it more in more locations than really just on the 2D sheets? Will you actually get a view of this as you walk down the street? So there's certain little visual uh, elements that you can do an analysis on as well, not just, you know, what's the lighting, what's the solar radiation. There's a lot of different things that you can analyze, both with Ecotech and with also the other, uh, other software. In terms of Ecotech, if people were watching the earlier uh, webinar that we did for Green Building Studios, <clears throat> uh, basically what you're going to see is that it was really early on in design, more conceptual. Ecotech can be used within conceptual design, design development, and more so at the end as well for validation of specific things or just to do studies of certain elements. So it's not just, you know, I need to use it early on, then once we've made some decisions, it's not really useful anymore. Or once we get to the point where we're really being specific in our room layouts, then it's not going to be any good. So it is something that you can actually take advantage of. So again, sort of the same idea. Just you can get the information earlier, but you can also take advantage of that much later in the process as well. This is showing a little Im uh, image here of Green Building Studios. It's one of the other analysis software. Also, if you do purchase Ecotech, you will have uh, Green Building Studios free on subscription. Okay. Now, I mentioned before with the Green Building Studios how that's much more of an early on. It's not just that that makes them different. You've got Green Building Studio and you've got Ecotech, and there is some overlap in terms of what it's looking at. 
but there's certain things that you just can't do with one or the other. So it's really looking at different things. So again, I'll use one early on in the process, just looking at the whole big picture, but very schematic, very overall and simplified. The other one I can get very much big picture as well, but I can also be more specific about things. Now, notice how the lead daylighting credit potential is not checked. That doesn't mean that you can't do it. It just means by default it will not give you that information, but you can actually get your lead daylighting while using Ecotech. So some of the different functions that you can do, you can do different things for light. You can do both uh, artificial light and natural light. You can do for insulation in terms of how much are you getting hit with, this, with the, uh, the, the sun. Can you take advantage of that sun? And if I sp pick specific elements in my model, I can say how much radiation am I getting on them? So unlike Green Building Studios where it just says, okay, the whole roof, yeah, that's going to get one thing. Okay, I can say this one little location on the roof, how much really can I get for solar radiation on that surface? Is it really viable to put in solar panels there or maybe somewhere else? So we got temperature and psychometrics, computational fluid dynamics. Notice how it says export files. You're not actually doing the CFD in the program, but I can take what I have here and utilize that in the program that's specific for it, and then bring it back around into Ecotech for the graphic analysis, as well as for the uh, the, 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 the presentation, basically. Now, these aren't the only functions, but these are the ones I'm really going to focus on. Other functions would be more along the lines of comfort levels. You're also going to have things for acoustics as well. Yeah. Now, depending on what you're doing, you can bring content into Ecotech from outside of it, or you could do all your modeling in Ecotech without actually going anywhere else. But depending on what you want to get out of it, so you can see over here we've got a bunch of different kinds of analysis on the bottom of the screen. If I want to get something that is really accurate with shadows, what I want to end up doing is getting a geometry export. Because what that's actually going to do is show me every little piece. It'll show me the muttons on my windows if I have that, things that are outside the building. I'll get all of that. But if I'm looking for something that's more thermal or just solar radiation or energy, I can go with a space-based model. Now, at the moment, this might not make a whole lot of sense, but I'm actually going to go through both process. I'm going to hop into Revit and just build something really quick, and then I'm going to export that twice, two different file formats, two different ways, and then I'm going to bring it in both ways so I can show you how it's the same host can be used differently. So I'm going to hop over into Revit now. So at this point, I'm now inside of Revit architecture. Which version of Revit you're in doesn't matter. And I'm just going to build something pretty simple. Uh, there we go. Break that space up. Well, nothing too much, just dropping a few things in here. If you watched the Green Building Studios one earlier, you'll notice that well, I do actually still want to make sure, oops, do that there. I'm still going to make sure that I have floors, walls, ceilings in here. Because what happens is when I'm exporting this out, depending on the kind of export I use, I still want to make sure that all of my spaces and rooms are completely bound. So depending on what my goal is, there we go. And one of the benefits of Revit is telling me whenever I have a problem like this, so make that an even number. And let's just say I didn't want that wall there anyway. So let's copy that down there. And I'll copy that over to there. Oop. There we go. Definitely not perfect, but it gets the idea across, so I have my, my parts that I can use for this. Now, depending on what kind of an object I'm trying to do, or what kind of uh, analysis I'm trying to do, what's the object of the analysis, I could always send this out right now. But remember, I had two different versions of it. And if what I'm trying to do is utilize this, 
for something more than just, say, shadows. I want to get some thermal information. I need to make sure that I have my rooms in place. And what I want to do with that is I'll just drop in a couple of ceilings. And I'll throw a quick roof on this also. There we go. Now, at this point, I basically have a pretty simple model. So, yeah, I should probably draw a wall in there to close that off. And let me clean this up so it's not quite so huge. There we go. So I have that there. Now, if I were to run an analysis on this, depending on the kind of analysis I'm running, it may or may not actually work. What I mean by this is that if I actually look inside of the, the building itself that I've just created, I'll just draw a quick section through it. The ones where I actually put a ceiling in there, my room goes right through that. But that's good, because that means in this location, that room bounding element will actually give me the correct square footage and, and actually, more importantly, cubic footage. It gives me my volume. If I look at this one here, though, the room that I've actually placed in that space, that stops there. I need to make sure that I actually get the correct volume here. So I want to make sure that room is as big as I need it to be. So that needs to be computed correctly. And I'm just going to fix that one little thing that I did here. There we go. Close enough for now. So once I've actually got my building here, what I'm actually going to do is come up and I'm going to export this. So I'm going to export, and I have two options now. I'm going to export this once as a GBXML, a green building XML file. The other thing I'm going to do is export this as a DWG, sorry, a DXF file. Now, the reason why I'm going to export this twice and as two different uh, methods is so that I can take advantage of this two different ways. Let me fix this real quick. That was bothering me. <laughs> there we go. Again. There we go. So export that again, GBXML. And this reminds me that I have to make sure that not only making the rooms big enough to encompass that space, I have to make sure that those rooms were told that I need their volume. So when I say yes to this, now I can see things like this. So that's making sure I'm actually seeing whatever I'm looking at. Now, I'm telling it what the building type is. I'm telling it what the location is. And I'm also going to tell it the ground, the ground plane, the project phase, all of that. So actually, let me make sure I've got one other thing inside of this. Ground bounding and Got to fix that room real quick, and then I'll set that up. There we go. Good. So if I take a look at this now, I can make sure that this is being computed basically where I need that to be at. So that's basically a level one room that's going up, say, 20 some odd feet. When it hits the roof, I want that to actually notice, know, it, know that it should be cut. And depending on what's actually happening with things, I can always modify where the computation height is actually being chopped at and make changes to things. So that dashed line is telling it that I'm actually computing the square footage and volume from that point on up. 
So I'll leave that there for now. So I'll come over here, and I'll export this out as a green building XML. I've got that set up there. I've got my location I can put in. I can look at my details and see if there's any problems with things. I can make it isolate different rooms. And I can actually look at the different surfaces here and get even more data from this. So I can actually see that this room has a roof, a wall, floors, all these different things associated to it. And I can make sure that everything is essentially behaving as I want it to or as I intended to. So I'll just save that out. And then I'm going to save it one more time. There we go. Make sure it's my 3D view. Also, if you're new to 2012, all the old settings, they're inside of here, and you have a whole lot more organization in terms of how everything is set up. So it just depends on how you want that to go out. So there we go. All right, so I've taken my model, and I've exported that out. And what I'm going to do is hop over now into Ecotect. So this is the first view I see when I open Ecotect. So if you're used to the newer versions of Revit 2011 or 12, you'll probably be familiar with that sun path. Now I'm going to go to File, because I've already got my model. I shouldn't have to redo it already. So I'm going to come over here and say Import, and I have two options, Model Analysis Data or 3D CAD Geometry. Now, if I say Model Analysis Data, and I click on this, I'll hop into the folder that actually has, let's see here, all my information. so I tell it what I'm looking at. So I'm going down here specifically for my Green Building Studio files. There we go. And I am looking for that one right there. So got my F1 right there. I'll say Open. And now I have a dialog to choose how this treats elements. Now what I mean by treats is that I'm looking at the different spaces again from that model that I created. Now in this case it's looking at it and saying, okay, well, you actually had a basic wall in there. Okay, what should you treat that as? Okay, well, that's a wall. Your fixed 36 by 48, however, Ecotech isn't sure what that should be. So what I want to do is actually make sure it understands that that actually is going to be considered a window. The reason I want to make sure I do this is so that when it comes in, it gives it the right materials. It gives it the right usage. It makes sure that it actually is going to be transparent or translucent or utilized correctly so that when I do actually make my setup here, it knows how it should be seen. So that should be seen as a door, the air. I don't really need air to be brought in. So you know what? I'm just going to come over and say, don't bring that in. So when I say import, no, ignore that item. And then the roof comes in as a roof. So I can choose how things come in here, how they're organized, and I can see zone. I'm going to explain zone in a little bit in a more in a little bit more in a minute though. And I'll say, okay, well, you know what? I'm going to open this up as a brand new file. Uh, that thing for a second. <laughs> and let me do that one more time. So I'll bring that in for model analysis data. Again, making sure I choose the Green Building Studios. And then I'll come down here. And you know what, I'm just going to grab this one from earlier today, actually. Same thing. Make sure that it understands what these objects are going to be seen as. And I'll say open as new. And there we go. Now, what I'm looking at here, it looks really, really simple. And that's really because it is very, very simple. If I look at this, not in the 3D editor, but in the visualize ribbon, or sorry, visualize pane, you can see how simplistic the whole thing looks. Now, what's happening is these lines 
are basically where it feels are different zones. And the zones are actually based on the rooms or spaces that I have inside of Revit. Now when I come over here, I can look at the different zones and turn them on or off. So I look at level three and say, you know what, I don't want to see room number 12. Okay, so I turn it off. This turns off that entire space, but you see how it leaves that room around there, or sorry, that, that shade around the whole element. Essentially what happens is that's considered external shading because it's outside of the building. So I end up having that on the outside of everything. So it really does depend, again, what do I want to do with this and how do I want to treat the elements? Now if I want to get a better idea of what's actually happening inside of everything, okay. What I want to do is take advantage of one of the features of Ecotech and tell it, I'm actually going to cut into this. So I'm going to assign a section plane. And I can move this in and move this out, change the direction or axis that this is coming in. And as I go into this, yeah, let's see right there is good. What you're going to notice is that that wall, this came from Revit. Walls in Revit have thickness, floors in Revit have thickness, even the roof in Revit has thickness. None of it has anything here. All Ecotech is looking at when I bring in a Green Building Studio file is basically the surfaces of those rooms. So this is why it's more so for thermal or you know just generic things like radiation on the surface. I'm not looking for really accurate shadows. And the reason I say that is because when I actually do shadows here, I was going to tell it that I'd like to actually see them. In this case, that sun is going right through that window opening and hitting the floor. Now, that seems normal, but if you look at it this way, that window really should have thickness of a wall there. So on the very top of this, I should actually lose some of that because the wall's sticking out and not allowing as much light to come through. So if I'm looking for really accurate or really realistic shadows, unfortunately, this isn't going to be the way. But if I'm looking at a much more general idea of my shadows, then I can bring that in here and I can still work with this and still get the information that I want. And this is all still live because as I change this, I can actually see what happens throughout the day. So let me turn off my section. I'm just going to take a look at some of the tools for the shadows for a minute. Now, if you're familiar with the way it works in Revit, it's the same way here. I grab this and I can just move this back and forward. I can put my mouse up here and use the scroll wheel to change the time. I can also change the date. And if I want to get an idea of how things are throughout the entire year, I can always say, you know what, show me that annual sun path. You get an idea for how much that angle really changes throughout the year. Now this is the kind of thing where I can actually say, you know what, I want to put some planting here, but I'm not sure how much light I'm really going to get in certain areas. Rather than going crazy, going back and forth over and over again, trying to get a feel for what's happening, I can always say, show the range throughout the day. And I get this graded range based on how many steps I'm asking for. And I can see that, okay, here it's completely black. There's never any sun there. But over here, you know, it's only a little bit gray. It looks like for the most part I will get light most of the day there. And in here, I would think it wouldn't be that bad, but it looks like it's going to be dark most of the day there. And this is something that I can animate too. Whether it's hourly or annually. So what this is doing is it's actually showing me the shadow range from the entire year. So I can see how much things change from January to January. Now in this case, I'm looking at my building and it's not too bad, I can get an idea of what's going on, but in reality, I know it's not going to fit on the site perfectly square. If I look at this, you know, it's dialed right in, just like it came from Revit, nice and orthogonal. One of the things with Revit is I can very easily and quickly change my True North Project North. I can do the exact same thing here too. I have to go to Project and look over here at my site specifics. So you can see the little mouse moving here. I basically just grab this and rotate it. So I'm going to rotate this 55, 51 degrees. Okay, go back to the visualize. The grid hasn't changed in reference to the building, but you can see here that the sun actually has. So because I've now tweaked the sun, 
I can see how I'm getting light much more often throughout the entire day in there. And the dead zone in the, in the back that never got any light now actually at least does early on in the morning. So I can start modifying my building and getting very quick options and saying, okay, but what happens if I rotate it this way? How about that way? What if I change it like this? So I can really quickly start to look at some different orientations on a site. And if I'm trying to get an idea of, well, is the sun really hitting it? I'm, you know, I want to look at it from the perspective of the sun, maybe. You actually have a button for that. So now when I start changing the time, the camera changes with that sun. So I can get an idea of if I can see it in this view, the sun will actually be able to hit it. Okay. So, so far just a couple of quick simple things using the solar tools, looking at how it works with the sun, and tweaking a few things here and there. So just depends on what I'm trying to do. Now, this is not going to be dead on accurate in terms of the sun because, again, I'm not having the thickness of things like my windowsill. I'm not having panes of the glass like muttons or anything else. If I do this again, I'll say File, Import. This time I go for the 3D CAD geometry. So DXF, choose File. I'll grab that file that I have from earlier. This brings it in, and I see a little preview in the window. And I can see everything now is broken into layers. Now I know that wasn't the way it was inside of Revit, but Revit can export to CAD. And because basically a DXF is a CAD file, it breaks it down into that. So what I need to do now is say, OK, my ceiling, well, that's actually a ceiling, but Revit couldn't tell. So that one, element type, that should be considered a ceiling. The door, that's a door already. Good. Door frame, floor outline, well, that should be a floor. So basically, I just go through and confirm that everything coming through here is actually going to be confirmed and understood to be what I want it to be. So I might say that that's actually going to be a panel or something for the framing so that it doesn't make it transparent. But the A-glass a glaze, yeah, that should definitely be glass. So I'll go through that. I'll set up my DXF curve angle because it is going to triangulate things. And I can tell it to auto-merge triangles. Now, I'm, going to not, I'm not going to do that right now because I want to actually show the other tool and you can see how triangulated this actually becomes. But one thing I will do is I want to scale this. Now, one-to-one -one is what you'd expect it to be. I don't want to have it be a different size. But the export from Revit, making the DXF, and then importing that, I do want to do 25.4. Reason for that is essentially I'm going from millimeters to inches. So when I say open as new, I'll not save anything. So there's my model I just brought in. And one of the things I have here is the ability to confirm that this is actually the correct size. So I can just always use a tape measure here and say from that corner of that window to this corner, that right there, that's about three feet. So I know that my scale was correct. Now, this view here looks to be a huge mess. And part of the reason for that is because everything is triangulated. Looking at it in Visualize isn't too bad, but looking in the 3D editor, yeah, that's pretty you know, convoluted. One of the things I can do, though, is come in here and tell it to merge all those triangles. It thinks about it, and you can see how much cleaner this actually is now. Now I can actually at least see my surfaces. So this right here, because of that 10 degrees, that's why it's triangulated it's still quite so much there. But everything else is much more orderly and cleaned up now. So seeing these lines, that's normal. That's not going to go away. But now when I actually start to look at things, so let's say I do a cutaway section, you can really see the thickness of the walls, the ceilings, the frames, the window. So if I were to turn on my light, you can see how it actually is taking into consideration things like the overhang of the roof, the actual thickness of that wall. So these are some of the things that I can actually set up and organize so that way, when I'm working with this, it does what I need. Now, at this point, I have one version that's pretty much all CAD, all solid objects, all realistic. And I have another version that's really simplistic. 
the thing is, though, it doesn't have to be one or the other. In a lot of cases, you don't want it to be one or the other. You don't really need to have the entire building come in as really complex geometry, when you might only need a, cer a certain amount. An example of that would be this. I'm going to do this one more time. So model analysis data, I'll grab that one that's already there. So hop in, and let's go with the simplified one. So I've got that, and make sure it understands that that's window. And I'll say open as new. So I've got this. Now let's say I want to put some shading devices on there. OK. I'll hop back into Revit here, and I'm actually going to drop in a couple of shading devices. So this is just a parametric component that I made a while back. Very accurate, automatically puts in all the veins. Every single one of these is modeled. So let's set up my view. So this is the only thing that's in there. And I'm going to export just that. So good. Yep. Next. So I'm going to take advantage of something that I made that was very complex. And I'm going to put that in an object or in a model that's relatively simple still. So when I bring in the 3D CAD geometry, I'll choose the file I have. Select that. There's all my geometry. I'll say what this should be. So element type of that. I might make it as a panel or a wall or something. Just really anything that I want it to be, basically. So I'll say import into existing. And there's my object. Now, this is nowhere near in the right location, but I'm not too concerned because I can still edit all this information when I bring it in. And I'm actually just going to clean this up a little bit, too. There we go. So I'm just going to say I want to move this. Put that there. Helps when I clean up my view. There we go. And then I'm going to rotate that. Oops, I forgot to set the origin before I did that. So let me just move this up a little bit. And move that back. There we go. So got my shading device right there. So I look at my visualize. That's on the wall. Turn on my shadows. Realize the building is right there. Good. And as I rotate things, I'll be able to see what that shadow does on that wall. There we go. Now, this allows me to do a couple of different things. Number one, it allows me to have a very simplistic overall model but I can use something that's much more specific in certain locations. So I don't have to go crazy modeling everything to an amazing level of detail. Whoop, there we go. So I can mix and match the different parts of the design as I see fit. Now, this also gives me a few other things that I can do. So if I come over here, and I'm just going to clean my view up a little bit so I can see some more. So there we go. And let me move that down a little bit. so go. That, that is a negative four feet. There we go. So it's right on top of the window. So this way I can come in here and start to look at what's going on. Now, if I'm trying to see what happens with this, how the light actually reacts with that shade, what I can end up doing here is selecting different elements and saying, you know what, I want to know what happens when the sun hits this, or how the sun tries to hit this object. 
So what I'm going to do is assign that as a solar reflector. Now, just calling it that might not make much sense. But what I'm basically doing is telling it that I want to know what path the sun is taking to try to get to that object. So in this case, that, that object that I'm trying to get to is the floor here. Oops, maybe zoom out a little bit easier to show. There we go. So all of these arrows here facing and hitting that wall, they're hitting that wall because I'm telling it I want them to try to hit the floor. So I can see how they hit the floor, how they bounce off of things if I tell it that I'm looking for maybe indirect light. So two bounces, I can see which direction they're going in. If I'm trying to do a light well, I can start to see, will the light actually go the direction I think it will? So how is that path coming in? So I can really start to look at a lot of different things in terms of how I'm actually going to be organizing this. So just a couple of little quick things I can set up for this. Really depends again on what is it that I'm trying to do? What is it I'm trying to build or show? Because I have a lot of different things that I can set up. And this isn't even really getting into doing an analysis yet. This is just taking advantage of the modeled objects that I've created. And then I can look at them later on or in a different version. So just to keep things a little bit easier to work around and have a smaller file, I'm actually just going to start a new one again. So I just showed a couple of ways that we can bring content in from other files and different ways I can sort of mix and match that to really best suit my needs. Now that doesn't mean that you have to go that way. Again, with Green Building Studios, you have to bring it in from somewhere else. With Ecotech, I can just come over here and say, okay, this is one space. And this is zone number one. I'm going to make another one. There we go. And that's zone two. If I need to make one taller, okay, well, let's make it taller. So now that one's a little bit taller than the other one. It's also floating a little bit in there, but that's yeah, okay. <laughs> now, I mentioned before I would talk about the zones. Essentially, the zones can be treated as layers, but they can also be used for more than that. You can utilize them to control what's happening with these. So if I look at this, and right now they're both pretty much the same color. It doesn't really help me much. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to look at the properties of that zone. So I can come over here and say, okay, I'd like to change the color from that to say maybe orange, easier to keep track of. But while I'm in here, I can also tell it that I want to have a specific shadow, or a specific color for the shadow of this. So if I want to see, well, what shadow is being casted by this part or that part? You know, if I have shading devices, do I want to make sure that they actually are working or do I have too many in there or, you know, this one's actually shading everything where that one's just in the same location. It's not really doing anything. So giving them different colors allows me to see that. I can also treat this as the data for a room or several rooms. So what's the occupancy level inside that space? Are they moving around a lot? So how much energy or heat is actually being given off by the people that are within that space? So again, if I'm trying for thermal information, this is where it starts to understand what it should be going for or where the necessary information is coming from for that. Again, I have more information regarding thermal. What are the hours of operation? If this is going to be a school, it's probably only going to be in use from maybe you know, six in the morning till four in the afternoon, typically, and then evenings here and there. If it's an office, it's probably going to be used more so, no weekends. If it's a, if it's a mall, you know, 24-7 practically. So this will help me understand how much energy I'm getting, how much time I'm inside of it. Set it up for that. And then I can also confirm that everything here is correct. So if I actually tell it to calculate that, you can actually see really quickly a whole bunch of little yellow dots. That's it running through and confirming that that zone is enclosed and getting an idea of what the floor area and volume and everything is. But having these here allow me to go in and say, okay, you know what, this is a thermal area or it's not a thermal area. It's on or it's off. 
or it's frozen or it's on. That's one of the ways I can actually have different design options. Basically, this one's on, I run a uh, check, now I turn it off, try another one, run another check. What's the difference in that? What, what's it look like? So I can start to look at different options on terms of how I'm actually going to set things up. Now, I'm actually going to run a couple of quick, you know, relatively simple analyses just to show a few things. But before I do that, I'd like to actually make a way that there's some light that actually gets in the space. So I'm going to insert a window. Come over there. Hop up. And right about there. Oop. Let me redo that one more time. <laughs> and Ecotech apparently is more concerned about the hurricane than I am right now, so I'm just going to open that up one more time. There we go. So get that rolling one more time. So let me insert something on that good quick one. There we go. And let me just throw another space in there for something else that I'm going to do in a bit. There we go. Cool. So now I at least have something going on in there. Now that I've got a window in this, and if I look at this, I can kind of get an idea of what I've actually built. What I can end up making sure I have is the ability to actually do an analysis. So let me actually clean this up. I think I'm putting that on the floor. Yeah. Sorry about that. There we go. So, see my window there? What I, if I want to do, I can always put my light in there, see my shadows. But I'm more concerned about other things than the shadows right now. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to tell it that I want to analyze this. And when I do an analysis inside of Ecotech, I'm telling it specifically what concerns me. So what I can say is display this grid, which currently is sort of a mess. It's all over the place. And I can say that right now, the only thing I'm concerned about is this room. So I can say, you know what? I'd like you to auto-fit that to within the selected object. So you can see how that boundary now is all inside of here. And I'm giving it a specific height off the ground. So if I'm trying to see what the lighting level is at a certain height for like maybe the desk height, no problem. I'll say lighting levels, perform calc. I have different kinds of levels, different levels of information that I want. You'll notice export to radiance. If I'm looking for a more detailed analysis or I'd like to do something that will give me the lead level of credits, I'll use the, the radiance. The reason why I would use the radiance one is because of the way that Ecotech actually looks at the design sky. So Ecotech looks at it a little bit more realistically where lead requires me to have a perfect world scenario in terms of what it looks like. So I'll see a little bar going down the bottom of the screen. This runs through and does a basic analysis on what's going on. And I can see the color changing as I actually work. Now what I'm looking at currently is a daylight factor. And I can tell because that's what it's showing me right here. I have daylight levels. I have electric light levels, which right now shows me as blank. And that's correct. I haven't actually put a light, like an actual physical light, in my model. So I shouldn't have something in there. I have overall light levels, and I have an illumination vector. So similar to before with the arrows, I can actually see which angle and what direction my light is coming from. So I can see how it's coming in. I can start to see how it's reflecting off of other objects if I ask. And I can say, you know what, show this to me in 3D. 
So what this is basically doing is showing with height how strong the values change. I can tell it to show me the average, show contour lines maybe, so I can kind of get a better graphic idea of what's happening, turn off the grids if I don't want them, turn off the shading. I can actually get the values of the nodes. So if I'm trying to find out what really is the amount of light at that, you can see I'm getting a real number now. And I can modify the steps for my contours. So it really depends on, again, number one, what am I looking for? And I'm doing this right now in one axis. OK. So what happens if I do it in this axis? So let me go from that one to this one. There we go. So I'm setting the axis like this. And I'm going to say, you know what, run another calculation. So just this quickly, I can say, OK, well, how, how does that light actually penetrate into the room? What's the angle that the sun is taking? So I can run through there and start to see what's happening. This time, it doesn't look like a lot happened. And the reason is that's actually penetrating the roof just enough that it's catching the light hitting the top of the, top of the element. So I can see some color here, but my, now my maximum is a little bit high. If I knock that down a bit, now I can start to get more of a realistic color. So I don't even have to rerun this. As long as I understand what I'm looking at and how it got to that point, I can tweak the data to give me a realistic look. And regardless of what I say the maximum is, if I say show the node values, it's still going to show me the legitimate numbers. So the colors are only being done based on the contours I ask for. And again, that one's at 95, 97, because that's technically outside the surface that I've created, outside my building. This is within, so you can see how it's in the 20s and teens. So just a couple of quick ways that I can set things up. Now, this is all 2D. If I come down here and say, OK, you know what? I'd really like to see what's happening within the whole thing. So I might, OK, perform a calc, run through one more time. But this time, I'm telling it to use the full 3D extents of the analysis grid. And I'm going to lower the preciseness so it doesn't take too long. So this is basically running through, depending on how accurate I want, depending on what steps I've given it in 3D space. Now, when I changed it from x, y to y, z, you saw me get a little warning or a pop-up. That's because it was telling me that we didn't run an analysis at this point. You're going to have to redo this. Now what I can do is modify where in this I'm looking at. I can change the axis of this and literally walk this. And I can make animations of this also. So let me hop that back down to there. And I can also modify how the grid even looks. So depending on what I want to see this, I can say, you know, show in 3D. I can see that coming up there. Say my maximum is really at 40 instead. A little bit more realistic in terms of what's happening. But I can also end up tweaking how this looks. I can say, you know what? I want to see it with cubes or with a shroud. Clip it to the current 2D plane. So depending on how I want to actually see this, there's a lot of little information I can tweak. So just a couple of really quick, really simple analyses that I can run from this. And if I wanted to actually get my electric lights, instead of the actual, just the daylighting, the natural, I would actually just come in here and say, OK, I'm putting a light bulb in. So, OK, where's the top of the light? So I'll say it's going to be at, say, 10 feet. And I'll point that in that direction. Oops. There we go. So let's grab that, and let me move this down just a little bit. Oops. Yeah, a little bit more. So I can set this up, move it around wherever I need it to be. And I can start getting very detailed about how that element sets up. 
it knows it's a light. But what I can actually do is pick the kind of lights that I want. Is it a fluorescent light? Is it a halogen light? You know, what are these elements? How do they actually set themselves up? I can actually pick all of these and modify them. And if I look at the properties of these, I can start to actually look at the kind of light that it is. So I can see the profile of essentially the IES file that I can also add to this. And if need be, I can even go in here and click on these points and modify them. So again, you do have a good amount of control if you want to get into that with Ecotech. And I can do the same exact thing with my materials for things like my walls. So if I'm looking at this right now, okay, there's my layers of construction. Even if I have just a single surface, I didn't get the full thickness of the wall from like a DWG export, this gives me all that information. So I can get a lot of information in here relatively simply. And there's a lot of other kinds of analysis I can do. You know, a little quick example of something would be acoustics. And this is basically a saved script that I can almost send somebody and just have them double click it and it runs. So essentially the rays that I showed before with the sun where I can see the bounces, this is the same exact theory or idea using acoustics instead. So if you're trying to check out the reverb for something, or if you're trying to check out indirect light, it's the same idea in terms of what you're trying to do and how you would use Ecotech. But they're just different methods of use, using the tools that it has. Hmm. And again, I can sit here and look at this and actually see the numbers of the decibels as it hits things and as it goes down. So same exact thing that I can do with light, same thing I can do with thermal. Just one of the features that it has. Okay. So like anything, there's always a lot more data that you can spend, a lot more time we can spend going through things. This is more of a taste of some of the different features. If anybody has questions, please feel free to show them in there. So we're going to be keeping an eye on that for a few minutes. If anybody has more detailed things or they'd like to schedule, you know, a private session or demo or even a class, we definitely can take care of that for you. So I'd like to open up the, the uh, floor to questions. Just type them in that little window. There was a question, Peter, from earlier. Mm -hmm. um, there, is there a new version of Ecotech uh, available? Mm -hmm. Actually, not yet, no. We're currently still on 2011. That's the one I'm on. There are some tools that are being brought out and are being shown to people for things like Vasari, which is a separate program, but the 2012 version of Ecotech has not been released yet. There may be one that comes out, if there's going to be a 2012, I have a feeling it's going to be out within the next two months. I'm not sure. Uh, things I've heard from Autodesk have been back and forth a little bit. Okay. And there's another one um, that came in. A lot of people are asking about if the, um, the webinar is going to be recorded. And it, it is being recorded, and we're going to put it on the website, on our website next week, end of next week or early um, the following week. So please do look out for that. And there's another question that says, can you show some thermal analysis? Mm -hmm. So basically just do this here. So let me insert a quick window just so that there's something where, of course, as I do this, I realize I have the building facing backwards. So no big deal. I'll spin the building around. But if I'm doing thermal, I also want to know where my, where my weather is. So I'm actually just going to pick a weather file. And I'll pick LA tell it to match the global position so it understands what's happening. And okay, so make sure I'm facing the right direction for where I picked. That way I get some light coming into that space. And what I'm going to do is set up my zone here that I have so that it actually understands, you know, okay, if I'm doing thermal, what information in there is setting it up? So how many people am I going with? So let's say it's open or typical. Recalculate how many people there are check my thermal properties, 
So I'll say people are working there from there to there, and there to there. What kind of a system? So I'll say maybe natural ventilation. And I'll say low precision and calculate. And I just want to double check one thing. How big is that? Good. So now that I got that space, let's come over here, do a quick display on it. analysis grid, auto fit within. So now I'm inside that space. Say I want to do a different kind, so maybe insulation levels. So am I doing solar radiation, sky factor, absorbed solar radiation? If this isn't the kind of thermal you're looking for, I always have more things under here for calculate. So I can actually just come down and do a different thermal analysis instead of that other kind of analysis. So am I looking for temperatures, losses and gains, space loads, thermal comfort? So not everything is down here. So we have our temperatures. I'll just run through. Uh, eh, yeah, I'll do this one. That's fine. Go in there. Hourly. Say recalculate. And discrepancies because it actually has that. And what this ends up doing is showing me here. Now, there's actually an analysis tab here. And it's not what most people tend to think. Most of the analysis that everyone sees are all the different colors in here. But when I'm inside of this window, I'm looking at more of an analysis in terms of my solar exposure, material costs, once I actually give something a material, resources it might consume in terms of energy, reverberation times, that last one we did with the analysis. Same thing with the acoustic responses. So when I'm doing my thermal, do I want to look at it for hourly? Am I looking for temperature dis distribution? So I can tell it to calculate, and it runs through and shows me what's happening. Where do I actually fall within things here? And I can take advantage of both that and the weather tool to actually look and see how things in my model are coming together. So if I want to look at this and see things like my psychometry, where am I? Where should I be finding myself in terms of comfort? So between looking at the thermal analysis and some of the things with the correct weather file that I've chosen, as long as I'm actually near where my building's going to be, I can get some pretty good data for this and really help inform what I'm trying to do with my model and with my design. The other question we have is, do we offer any free training on Ecotech? Uh, all of our classes uh, are, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on which side you're on, uh, are basically for pay. We have our free webinars uh, every Friday where we try to go through and either show new features or focus on specific skills. But all of our classes you do have to sign up for. Uh, Autodesk does have an assist program if you find yourself currently uh, out of work, unfortunately. So they will help you take care of the classes and you know, be able to afford more education to help you land a new job. So there are some options out there, but. Sounds good. I think we answered everybody's questions here. If anybody thinks of um, other questions, I know we're a little over time right now. Uh, we'll give you our contact information here. So let me, is there anything else, Peter, that you'd like to add, or are we good? Uh, just thank you, everybody, for showing up. We really appreciate you coming and spending your time with us. Uh, depending on what you're looking for, though, do take, take advantage of maybe the demos, see what's available. If you are using Revit, the analysis is already built in for simple stuff, for like solar radiation. Once you want to go take that further, then you're going to start looking at things like maybe Vasari or Ecotech. But if you have any questions, anything that you'd like to see further, please feel free to give us a call. And we enjoy helping you out. Thank you. Well, thank you, Peter, and thank you, everyone, for attending today's webinar. We hope you found this helpful and educational. Um, on the screen, there is some information on free webinars. Like we said, we do every Friday as a service to you. We also have training. You can join our news um, mailing list or marketing at microdesk.com. They'll have all the uh, classes, uh, what, what, uh, webinars or events or anything like that that are coming up. And if there's any other questions, you can also email us at webinars at microdesk.com. And once again, thanks, everyone, and have a great weekend.